Hi, welcome back to The Pomegranate Girl, a knitting and sewing podcast. My name is Annie and you can find me on all the places listed down below on Ravelry and Instagram. Um, this is a knitting and sewing podcast um, where I talk all about what I've been making and what I have been reading sometimes as well. Um, and just having general chit chats about fibre and making your own clothes. So yeah, that's all the introduction we need. Um, I think I've mentioned everything. And yeah, let's just get straight on into it and talk about finished objects. So firstly, what I'm wearing. I finished my holiday slipover by Petite Knit, which is a vest um, knit partially flat um, partially in the round and I'll talk more a bit about the construction later um, but yeah this is I've probably will have inserted a photo but I'll insert maybe some video footage or a photo of me wearing it because obviously you can only really see you know from like <laughs> half of my chest up and yeah this is a really nice pattern I've had the yarn in my stash for a while like, for this project and I was waiting to finish my Talvin in which I made for my mum for Christmas, which was a quite a long term whip. So if you've seen my episodes before, you know that that was on the needles for a few months. And once I finished that, I had a bit of a break and then I cast, not from knitting, just from knitting a garment. And I knit this for myself and it took me about a week. It's knit out of, I'm actually prepared and I've got the yarn with me, um, Camaro's, snuff nug um so two strands of this and a strand of silk mohair um and you knit it on 10 millimeter needles um so it is super quick and easy and yeah i really enjoyed knitting it it's the first time i've kind of picked up stitches for like a neck band or for the sleeves um so that was really good to kind of have that practice with such a chunky yarn um, my gauge is slightly different when I'm knitting flat to when I'm knitting in the round, um, but that it's quite a minuscule difference. Um, it's not enough to really change the garment massively, but it, it's just looks slightly more uneven, but I blocked it and that all came out in the blocking process. So that was good. Um, yeah, and I've really enjoyed wearing it. It's still maybe a bit too cold here in the UK for me to wear this like how I'm wearing it now I've actually today been had my cardigan like I've got quite a thick cardigan but it's not handmade it's I bought it a few years ago second hand and a shawl over the top so I've had like three layers of wool like on my torso just because it's been really cold um today especially and like the latter half of this week in Bristol um but yeah I think in the spring <clears throat> pardon me it will be perfect and yeah I'm still wearing it um but yeah if you're it's not necessarily something to wear like right in the depths of winter um on its own but it's a really nice layering piece and I really love wearing it like kind of how I'm wearing it now like over like a long sleeve t-shirt um with jeans um or maybe like a really nice blouse um or like a dress I think that would look so nice um, so yeah, I really enjoyed working with this yarn, um, the Snefnik, which thank you to the person who commented telling me that Bommeld is cotton, um, because I hadn't looked that up and I'd, beforehand I wasn't really well prepared. So yeah, Snefnik is 55% alpaca, 35% cotton and 10% extra fine merino. It's really lovely to work with. It's this, I think it's called a blown yarn where they kind of have the tube and they blow the alpaca strands through it and it's super lightweight which is what I really like about this it's quite like a chunky knit but it doesn't feel heavy on your body um which I really like and then for the strand of mohair I used Tim Silk Mohair by Sanders Gone, which obviously is looking really pretty right now um and the Snefnug was in the colour Lis Beige and this is the, I think it's their kit colour um, yeah, colour 1015, and the name of that is Kit, I think, um, from memory. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed knitting this. Um, you'll have seen my last episode that I'd like knit part of it, and then, yeah, a few days later I'd already finished it. 
um it did did take quite a long time to finish drying so i blocked it um and then it was on my blocking mats for like a week i do live in an old house i live in like a victorian terrace house um which is not the best it doesn't have great insulation um and i'm also on the bottom floor so it's pretty chilly um and that's just like one of the things from living in an old house that's not been particularly i'm living rented accommodation it's not my own house um so yeah it did take a while to dry um i did speak last week or in my last episode about um asking about if it was okay to dry things with like the cold setting on my hair dryer and someone said i can't remember who it was that i did get a comment that was really helpful saying yes you could do that but probably the best thing to do would be to have a fan over it which i have seen people doing i've seen casey from young folk knits do that um before but i just i don't have a fan and to be honest i just really don't think i it never for me i i never feel like it's hot enough for me to have one um in all the places that i've lived um it just it's hot for such a small portion of the year that to me it's just there's no point having one um so i don't own a fan and i have no intention of buying one but thank you to the person that said that because it made me feel like i could carry on if something was taking ages to dry i could and in the winter i could whack a cold hair dryer over it quickly um which i still feel a bit like i don't know i feel like that's not very good technique to be doing that but it's fine it was okayed by this person so yeah thank you for that um so yeah i'm been really enjoying knitting wearing it and yeah i don't think i'd knit this exact pattern again um because i have one now and it's quite chunky but i definitely knit more vests um yeah i think petite knit um i think her patterns are like pretty clear um she's like quite a big designer it's got quite a good size range i'd say um i know i think a few years ago she may have expanded it um it used to be not very inclusive and it's now more inclusive um and i knit the size xl which i think was the best it was the size for if your largest chest chest measurement was 100 to 110 centimeters i'm 105 so that was perfect it's given me i'd say maybe a slightly it's slight because of the way it's constructed um so you can see the armholes are really long i find that that you know it's not like it's joint here um i found that that didn't matter as well it does obviously matter but like the e that measurement of ease isn't quite the same because my waist is smaller um and that's really where it just kind of, is kind of quite boxy is what i'm trying to say um so yeah that worked out really well for me um got gauge with the recommended needles which was great and yeah just really enjoy knitting it and it was so nice to knit something for like a week and it would be finished um yeah especially a garment for myself it was just exactly what i needed so yeah I really enjoyed it and would recommend I've seen a lot of people knit this um so yeah I'm sure you already all know about it um yeah so let's move on to the next one which is also something that was a work in progress in my last episode and it is the Snara Ness I think that's how you say it. I'm so sorry to any of my people who are watching uh who speak I think it's Gaelic um but yeah, this is a scarf, um, like a kerchief or a headscarf, and it is by Gudrun Johnston, and it is in her most recent publication, uh, The Shetland Trader Heritage, so it's volume three, and it's called Heritage, and it's this really, yeah, I was really struggling to show you last time, but it's in this, got this beautiful lace pattern, um, I'll insert some photos so you can see, and it's slightly crinkled because I've been wearing this quite a bit um and this is knit out of jameson and smith's um two ply lace weight which is 50 percent real shetland wool and 50 percent lambs wool um and the shade is l69 mix so that's one of their like heathered shades i was trying to show you last time what the color looked like 
this still isn't picking up exactly like the colors on camera but it's a bit better it's this beautiful green that's got this like pink purple lilac like kind of mile through it it's really beautiful um it looks just more like green in real life especially with the lace it looks like this really beautiful like sage green but yeah when you get up close you can really see all the purple in it and I just love it I think it's so beautiful so yeah I have been really enjoying wearing this it's knit on 4.5 millimeter needles so that's why you get this very like open gauged knitting because it's a lace weight and I've been wearing it mostly obviously not with my hair behind it but I've been wearing it mostly like this um because I really wanted a neckerchief I think this looks quite good if you ask my boyfriend or probably anyone else they'd say what the f is she wearing but I quite like it um I kind of feel a bit like a scout um I don't know you must see that in the UK there's a group you can join like there's a few groups you can join as like a kid uh so there's like the scouts and the beavers and there's and cubs that's the other one and then in which is for boys and then I'm saying that in inverted commas because that's traditionally what it was um although I think it's a bit more inclusive now or at least I hope so and then for girls it is uh rainbows brownies and guides um anyway so you have these like the part of the uniform was these like kerchiefs um <laughs> and yes yeah, so that's really what it reminds me of I was yeah I was a guide for a little bit and I was also in scouts um and cubs and brown brownies I just did a bit of everything <laughs> um but it's yeah you probably have an alternative in other countries um but yeah I did that as a kid so that's really what it reminds me of um but I quite like it like this um in the book it's also styled as like a head um like a head piece like as a head scarf um which I do do think looks really nice I'm not sure if I can pull that off I don't think I'm cool enough for that but I quite like wearing it like this and it's also nice to have like another layer of warmth around your neck um I just love the colour I would knit one of these again um I can definitely see myself knitting a few in different colours in the future it was really quick to knit I think it took me like four days and that was like working on this and on this and like on some other things at the same time so yeah I really like wearing it um I'll try and include if I haven't already some photos of like the lace pattern up front up close even not up front um but yeah it's yeah one of I've just really enjoyed knitting it um and I really enjoyed wearing it so yeah, I haven't really seen many people knitting it. There's, it's quite a new book, but a lot of people have knit, or I've seen a few people be plan to knit or have knit the Vare, which is the jumper on the front, which is beautiful. Um, but I haven't seen many people knitting some of the other patterns. Um, but yeah, they're all great. I haven't knitted the Vare, but I definitely love to. It's a beautiful pattern. It's just got a lot of steaking in it. And that's something that I haven't done yet. So I'm kind of waiting till I've got a bit more experience before knitting that. Um, but yeah, that is it for like completed finished objects. Um, but I do have, oh no, no, it's not. I tell a lie. Um, my third finished object is because I'm not looking at my notes. <laughs> um, my third finished object is my Persephone mittens. And again, you'll have seen these if you've watched some of my latest episodes um I cast these on for my winter solstice cast on um just before Christmas I think that was on the 21st of December these are by Emily Foden and they are from her book book knits about winter which is published by Pom Pom Press it was published a few years ago um it was actually like one of the first knitting books I got because I had seen I think who did I see talk about it first maybe Kat from the Heather and Hops podcast I'll leave her link down below but I'm sure you know her um she had been talking about it and oh of course um Nicole from the Gentle Knitter who again I'm sure you all know um they had both talked about it and this was quite soon after I like started knitting more seriously and 
I was like, oh, that looks beautiful. So yeah, it was my first knitting book and I'll talk a bit more about it later because I've got some plans to knit something else out of it in the very near future. Um, but yeah, these are a really beautiful like mitten. They have got this like lace detail on either side. They've got a pico edge and then they've got this like line of, in the UK we call it moss stitch, but I think in the US it's called seed stitch, um, just running up. And I'll show you what they look like on. Um, they're just really nice. I'm just really happy with them. Um, they look like this. Um, so yeah, they're really, I think they fit really well. I haven't actually worn them out of the house yet. Um, they only finished blocking yesterday. Um, but yeah, I really like them and I'll definitely get loads of use out of them. So I knit these out of Garvanel Pentland in the shade Tin, which is 100% Romney wool from Wiltshire, which is quite near me in the south of England. Um, it's not the softest of yarns, I will say. I would even go so far as to say it's not as, I think, Jameson's or like any Shetland wool is softer. I hadn't knit with any Romney before, so I don't really know what I was expecting. Um, but yeah, it's it's not itchy, but it's, to me anyway, I'm, don't, I'm not really sensitive to wool, to be honest. Um, but it's, yeah, it has that like slight prickle to it that say like Let Lopey has. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I'd knit a garment for someone else out of it. I think I'd be fine with a garment made out of this because as I said, I'm not sensitive to wool. But um, yeah, for someone like, I don't know, my boyfriend who's um, pretty sensitive to wool, I think he wouldn't be able to wear a garment made out of it. But it is beautiful to knit with. Um, it's really like crisp um and i think yeah really good it blocked out so nicely um and yeah i think it's it feels like it's going to be really hard wearing which is exactly what you want out of mittens i think um but they still look you know quite delicate um so i'm really happy to have these i didn't have any mittens or gloves that fitted me um so yeah, this is like super practical and that's why I wanted to really get them finished quite quickly because I needed them because it's, yeah, really cold at the moment and especially in the evenings, it's been so chilly. So if I'm like going out anywhere, yeah, they've been really useful or they will be really useful. Um, and yeah, I'm just super happy to have something super practical. And it was also my first kind of like proper mittens I'd knit I had knit a pair before so before I a few years ago I started knitting garments but I say garments loosely um from the wool in the gang or like we are knitters they do a lot of kits um which I think are great for getting like people into knitting um but it for me it never resulted in something great I don't know if it was like maybe I didn't follow the pattern or yeah they, I just never was quite happy with how things looked um but it was great for teaching me like a lot of basics and like elevating my knitting from beyond just you know knitting a garter scarf that I had that's something I'd done as a teenager um so yeah I had knit a pair of mittens from a kit from I think it was Wool in the Gang and they I think what I hadn't done is I hadn't knitted the hand long enough. Um, like, I don't know, I think I probably, yeah, I just didn't really like get the proportions of them right. And I think I was just a bit impatient. and I just wanted to wear them. And so they would always like, I'll try and demonstrate it, but they'd always ride up basically. So like the here, you can see that the thumb, this is like, close whereas on my we are knitters ones like that was here um so obviously there was like I couldn't there was they were just uncomfortable is what I'm trying to say and I don't really wear them so and they're also they were made out of alpaca um and at quite a loose gauge and I just think they were really soft and cozy but like they weren't super practical so yeah those are all my finished objects um, let's move on to whips and I do have a kind of half finished object 
which is one that hasn't appeared on the podcast in a while because I took a bit of a break from knitting them and it is the unity socks so I finished one sock and these are from the liner or yeah liner book and it's about not it's about winter 52 weeks of socks um super popular I'm sure you've seen it I again it was one of like the very first knitting books that I bought myself uh last yeah last, early last year um and yeah these are I've knit one pattern out of them but this is the second pattern and I have finished one of the pairs so I oh there's been a saga with these they so I I knit the smaller size initially and thought it was fine um I, I only knit one and I thought it was fine and then I tried it on and the more I thought about it the more I thought oh no these are just I, I think these are just too small and they are gonna felt a little bit I think just because I'm quite hide wearing on my socks and that is just what tends to happen um and I was like oh I really don't want them to get any smaller so I ripped it all out and cast on for the second size up um with like which has more stitches in it um which was fine and it this this is that one but it just took me ages so I got to about here so I'd done all the gusset decreases I just needed to finish the foot and I just was like oh I'm so fed up with these so I just stopped knitting on them um and I picked them up this week when I had finished you know my Persephone mittens and I just thought oh I'll just finish one and cast on the other so I can get them off my needles so yeah that's what I've done um they're really nice they have this like beautiful cabling on them and they've just got a heel flap and gusset and then a slightly different toe the decreases are done like on the top and on the bottom rather than on the sides which is um not really what i usually do but i think it looks quite nice it's kind of bunched a bit but you can see there um and yeah um and then you don't kitchen at them you just it's like almost like a barn toe um so yeah where you just like pull the stitches all through um so yeah these are knit out of sorry I should have said earlier they are knit out of tuku wool sock um which is a I believe it's a Finnish sock yarn um do I have the ball band yes uh yeah tuku wool sock which is 80% Finnish wool and 20% polymide um, I've spoken quite a lot about how I usually don't knit um, socks made out of um, anything that's not 100% wool, um, like non superwash no nylon, but I really wanted to try this base um, and it's actually a bit thicker, so it's probably more like a, a thicker fingering, closer to a sport, um, and it's the yarn that the pattern designer suggests in the pattern um but in a the colorway h what's it h34 russo which is so it's this like beautiful brownie pink i love this color it's like one of my favorites um as you'll see a bit later on so yeah really happy with these and yeah i have cast on the second one so as you can see i've just done the cuff um i'm using one of my little stitch markers from ophelia orchard heart I've got a few of hers I really like them um I really like her designs um so yeah I've just cast on the cuff and to be honest I'm not I did like I do really like the pattern I love the effect that it gives um I think just because I've already I knit one full sock then ripped it out and I just am a bit <laughs> of the pattern which is why I need to get them off my needles so I'm a bit I haven't really felt drawn to work on them but I think if I just force myself um, to do a little bit every day they'll get done and you know I want to enjoy knitting I don't want it to feel like a pressure it's what I do in my downtime so yeah I'm sure they'll get done eventually this is what the skein looks like um yeah it's really nice to work with I got this in from Isolde which is uh, Azulda Teague's website. They used to sell yarn 
um, unfortunately they had to stop at the I think it was towards the end of last year because of Covid and Brexit and it was just they stopped quite a lot of European yarns and I think the Brexit custom fees were hitting them too hard and they just yeah it they just decided to close which is a real shame I like completely understandable um but yeah that is where I bought this and I now don't know where else you can get it in the UK um I know you can get the Tuku wool fingering and their DK but I haven't seen the sock base um anywhere so if you know of anywhere in the UK that stocks it um please let me know because I really like it it's really nice to work with um despite the I don't really mind the nylon content it's more the how they feel and these do feel really woolly um so yeah really enjoying well not really enjoying these but I'm enjoying the finished result <laughs> and it'll be great when I've got both of them um to wear so yeah that's whip number one whip number two is actually I should show you my basket <laughs> This is a, one of the best purchases I've made so far this year. Um, this is a basket which I keep all like my active whips in. Um, yeah, I got it off Facebook Marketplace. I've been after it like quite a big basket for a while. Um, ideally, I'd have bought one from like a local maker, but um, at the moment my budget won't really stretch to that. Um, so I was looking out for a second hand one. Um, and yeah, this one came up on Facebook Marketplace. So I went over, it was in a kind of the opposite side of Bristol, which I didn't realise when I said I'd like it. Um, but yeah, trekked over there one evening after work and picked it up. And yeah, it's a really good size. Um, and I really love all the colours in it. I think it's really unusual. Um, no idea where it originally came from. The person I bought it off didn't seem to know. Um, I think they'd picked it up second hand and they had like a business selling on like selling on stuff um but yeah really I really like it and yeah I just have it around the house with me when I'm yeah I've got all my active whips in um um so yeah um but yeah my second whip I'm housing in this blue rabbit house bag and this is a gift for my aunt who I've told not to watch this episode so if you're watching, you know who you are, click off it now. This is your warning. <laughs> um, but I have told her not to watch, I will tell her not to watch this. Um, and I am knitting my aunt a birthday present. And it's her birthday at the end of February. And I am knitting her the Colour Craze Cowl by Tammy Gore. So this is what I've got so far. Um, so this was a pattern by Tammy Gore and it's a play on her Colour Craze shawl, which is like a really popular pattern that she released. I'm not quite sure when, but this is like a play on that. It's the cowl version. So it's, yeah, it's got this like textured section. It's got stripes. It's got two colour brioche. Um, it's got like, yeah, a bit of everything. And I'm enjoying knitting this. Um, it's my first Tammy Gore pattern. Um, I've wanted to knit the shawl for ages after seeing Emma from Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company, who I love. Um, I love her work, I think it's beautiful, as we all know. Um, I saw her make one and I was like, oh yeah, that looks really nice. Um, and I thought, oh, the shawl might be a bit of a stretch getting that done in time for the end of February, but I could definitely knit the cowl. And I thought it, my aunt would find it really useful. Um, she's got a dog, so when she takes her dog out, um, and yeah, just like out and about really. Um, and like, yeah, when she's in the garden or on the allotment, um, I think it will be nice to have like an extra layer. So the wool that I'm using is Fully Mammoth Fibre Companies. And I actually got this on Ravelry someone was getting rid of it and they were like selling it on um and so I was specifically looking for Emma's yarn because it's 100% wool from Britain and I love her colours and I knew that I could get a mini skein set of hers um and I find it quite difficult to find non-superwash 
fingering weight mini skein sets um, that are like, I can find sock ones that are like superwash and have nylon in um, and then merino, but I find it difficult to find British wool mini skein sets. I don't know if that's just me, um, but if you have any recommendations for things like that, please let me know because it's really useful for gifts like this. Um, so yeah, I knew my aunt would um, would really appreciate having something that was like British wool and like a local, oh, Emma's in Northern Ireland, but you know, like a British wool. Um, she's something she's quite passionate about. It's like lo local products and like sustainability and yeah, like the British wool industry something I mean all my family are quite passionate about so I knew my aunt would like really appreciate that and yeah obviously Emma is on maternity leave at the moment and so I had a look on Ravelry to see if anyone was selling anything and they were so I bought this mini skein set off a lovely lady off Ravelry I think it was a lady a lovely person off Ravelry and these are the colours um I think these might have been from Emma's one of Emma's advent calendars maybe um just because one of the colorways was called Rufus's Christmas jumper um but I could be wrong um I'll leave all the colors listed below um but yeah it came in this mini skein set with also this color this is a really beautiful color like so all these like beautiful blues and greens and then the main color is jasmine by Lily Mammoth Fibre Company so I've spoken about, I feel like I speak about Emma's yarn all the time. This is her natural sock base, which is 50% BFL, 50% Cheviot. Um, I yeah usually use it for socks, but it's been really nice to knit something else with it. Um, I have to say, I'm not sure if it's, this is completely my own fault, not like the pattern or the wool, but I think it's not maybe a great yarn I don't know I think maybe because I haven't blocked it yet um I feel like it's slightly maybe something that had like a silk in it would be a bit nicer but or like have a more like polished look but I do think this looks beautiful and um, yeah I love Emma's yarns um so that is entirely like my own doing it looks I think the brioche looks really great um yeah I think after a good block and when all my ends are waving in neatly it should look really nice and yeah I'm just really yeah I just really can't wait to get this done and I really hope my aunt likes it um she can also knit so and she's a great knitter so it's always a bit worrying knitting something for someone else um yeah and like I don't she doesn't know I'm making this so yeah hopefully she likes it um yeah I'm just knitting it on the recommended needle size and yeah enjoying it and I so I hadn't started that in my last podcast and then um yeah her birthday isn't until the end of February but I wanted to get a good start on it because I've got a few gifts that I'm going to be making this year and I just wanted to get a head start on things um and get them like done so that I wasn't in this like last minute rush that I seem to be in before Christmas um so yeah that's yeah that <laughs> um yeah and I'm enjoying knitting it and yeah I was what I was going to say was I was a bit unwell last week I actually had an, ended up taking some days off work um I'm fine I'm all good um just yeah had a bit of a bad um, infection and that's all I'll go into you don't need to hear anymore um so yeah I took some time off work um only like two days but I when I wasn't <laughs> asleep um or like resting I was I got a bit of time to do some knitting um obviously I should rather would have been in work but I was so yeah I was in it was quite a not a nice experience but anyway I won't go on about that um don't want to be too negative um so yeah I did so I got quite a bit of knitting done on that then and then yeah I'm hoping to finish that soon so that I can get started on some other projects um and that I oh know I've got one more whip um honestly having my notes so far down and I normally wear glasses so that it just looks all blurry <laughs> I need to kind of have a way of them having them here <laughs> um my last whip is something I mentioned last time um that I was gonna start and it is my hat 
so this I am knitting the Pearl Soho I think it's the classic ribbed hat which is a free pattern um and I am knitting it out of Shelter from Brooklyn Tweed in the colorway Amaranth it's a worsted weight yarn um and it's an American wool I think it's a Taji Columbia blend it's really nice and squishy it's really similar to the Harrisville designs nightshades which I knit a hat with for my boyfriend last year um and I think that actually I think this is spun at the Harris Film Mill um I believe so that makes sense um they're kind of similar blends and yeah it's beautiful it's a very, very multi-tonal colour um yeah and I'm knitting this hat so I knit about five inches and I it's a free pattern um so yeah you knit to a certain length before doing the decreases so i've got yeah a few more inches to go um but i'm really enjoying knitting on it it's really good um like meeting knitting so i work i'm still working from home and probably will be um for the foreseeable future at least for another month until i start going back into the office i imagine we'll see how things go in the uk with covid but it's so i knit in me to if it's like a internal meeting and you know it's i actually find it better for me i find that i'm a better uh, attendee when i'm knitting it's something really easy it's just something to do with my hands i'm get quite fidgety otherwise um when i'm like sat still um so yeah really good meeting knitting so yeah this is i haven't really been knitting on this when i haven't been in meetings so that's quite good um to have got that done and this is kind of what it will look like so it has a folded up brim i'm sure you all know it um i am knitting the size i think it was inga from knitting traditions was talking about the how the pearl soho sizing was really she found it really big and i did originally cast on for the adult small size but it I tried it I like slipped it onto a really long cable tried it on and it was too big and I want this to be like a close fitting beanie so I actually am knitting the kids size but I'm gonna knit it to the length of the adult size before doing the decreases um so yeah um yeah that's all I've got to say about it but yeah uh this is very much inspired by Ophelia from Orchid's Heart as I mentioned last time she knit a hat out of this uh, colourway from Shelter, uh, of Shelter, from Brooklyn Tweed, and yeah, I loved it so much that I bought my own, uh, so yeah, sorry Ophelia, <laughs> um, but yeah, really, really, it's a really nice yarn, it definitely feels quite different, like especially, this is knit on small needles, it's on 3.25 for a worsted weight, so it's a very like tight gauge, but I think that'll make it really hard wearing. So, that is all my whips, um, I just wanted to briefly talk about sewing before I move on to like future plans and like what books I've been reading. So yeah, I am currently making, well, I'm, I started work on my zero waste dress, um, which I had had cut out for a while. And so I did start work on that and I'm yeah making some progress. But I decided that I wanted to make another orchard's dress by which is by the designer Vivian, I think it's Shao Shen. I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, and yeah, I made one of those before. I actually wore it in my last episode and you like have heard me talk about it. It's a really nice pattern. Um, but I decided that I would make one with sleeves. So I've, this is the bodice so far. I'm making it out of this cotton. Uh, sorry, I won't hold this up for too long because it is black and white check. Um, from Wild Orchard Fabric, which is a UK based, I think she might just be online, um, fabric store. And this was really reasonable. I think it was like nine pound a meter, which is pretty good value. Um, so it's this black and kind of oatmeal uh, gingham um, on, yeah, and a really nice, like I'd say cotton lawn base. Um, yeah it's really lovely it's really like nice and crisp and I don't often walk ugh, 
don't often work with cotton lawn. I often knit with either viscose, knit, I often sew with viscose or linen. Um, so it's a nice change to work with something a bit different and a bit more like crisp. Um, I am so well unlike linen which you really have to like steam um like linen is you know you do kind of like I like the crumpled look but when you're sewing a seam say so if you're like sewing a french seam you do really need like a, a lot of seam to get it good get a good press um but yeah I am gonna make this so the original orchard dress is sleeveless but I am making this with the sleeves from the Athena blouse or Anthea blouse I think of those two by Anna Allen um which has these beautiful puffy sleeves I have made the blouse before um I've made it last summer so I'm going to use the sleeves to make this like a puffy sleeve long version and I think it's going to be yeah very again quite picnic table-esque but that's the kind of style I like and I'm yeah I really I do often prefer to have things with sleeves um just for like warmth um so yeah I'm really excited to finish that and yeah I've got it all cut out I've obviously like sewn some of the bodice I'm halfway through doing that now um I was planning to get it done for tomorrow um me and my boyfriend and like some of our friends are going to a gig in the evening um, that was actually it was supposed to be in December but it got rescheduled so we we're supposed to be going to that and I was like oh I'll use that as an excuse to like finally save this dress um because I work quite well with deadlines uh, especially for like sewing and knitting but I don't know I will see how I'm feeling this evening if I feel like it I'll make it if not then that's cool I'll wear something else um you know it's not like I needed to make something new I just kind of wanted to use it as a deadline so yeah we'll see so yeah that's just a quick update on my sewing um let's move on to an exciting new thing that I've tried so I mentioned last time that I am doing a no yarn on fabric buy in January and also in February I have I have slightly broken it I bought some yarn for gift making um today um but that's it that's like those are some gifts that I've got to make you know quite soon um so I've bought that but I'm not buying any yarn for myself in January and February just I don't need any I've got I just really want to knit from my stash and also you know save some money for some other like things like trips or something and yeah I just didn't felt like I had a lot of yarn and I was getting a bit overwhelmed but <laughs> I did buy a drop spindle so if you follow me on Instagram you'll have seen that I was asking for some recommendations and yeah I got some really great ones so thank you so much um I just went on Etsy and googled drop spindle <laughs> um and I bought one from the wool barn it came in this box and it looks like I mean I'm sure you all know what a drop spindle looks like um so I think this is a top whirl one it doesn't have a notch in it which I've heard is good for beginners um but it also came with all this fiber so this is all I think British fiber but it isn't labeled um so you've got some like cream some gray some like very dark brown almost black and some mid brown and I'm yeah it isn't labeled as to what it is um there's like I don't know if they're the same maybe um but yeah it's all, all supposed to be British um and yeah it also came with like a little guide like a little booklet um yeah and it was reasonably affordable I think it was £18 including delivery which I thought was really good value um because yeah but one of my goals this year was to learn to spin or at least start to learn to spin I'm sure it's one of these things like with knitting um where you know you're always learning but I wanted to yeah to learn to spin my own yarn and this just has really come from getting more into knitting and being interested in fibre and local fibre and yeah spinning my own yarn was kind of yeah the next step that I wanted to take so spinning wheels are obviously 
quite expensive. They're a big investment and also not just um, financially, but having the space. And at the moment, I don't have the space for a, a wheel um, in like my house at the moment. I live in a house share and I just don't have the space for it in my room, to be honest. But at some point, um, maybe next year, if I move, I will have the room for a spinning wheel. Um, and yeah, I root, so I just wanted to kind of dip my toe into the water and get a drop spindle. Um, so it arrived this week and I've had a little go. I'll show you. Uh, this is, I tried with the white fibre first um, and this is what I made. It's so small and it's very uneven. Um, the pink is the leader that I used, by the way. Um, it's not in the yarn. Um, can you see that? Yeah, it's very uneven and it's pretty chunky in places, but I'm quite happy with it. Um, yeah, this was like half an hour's worth of spinning. It's probably like one or two grams. Um, it really isn't very much, but I just wanted to try it out. And I think I just need to like practice and t yeah, there's a lot of things. So if you have any spinning recommendations, please let me know. I had some really great help um, from, I think it's Ellie at Little Fern Fibres. She was really helpful. She gave me some great advice. So thank you, Ellie, if you're watching. Um, but yeah, any like, she also recommended a book, which I'm going to try and get. Um, it's quite expensive. I think it was like 25 quid, but I'll try and find that second hand somewhere. I think it's called Respect the Spindle. So she recommended that. So I am going to try and get that because I do find books really helpful, but I've also watched loads of videos. And so I'll just continue doing that. And I think just practicing. Um, but yeah, this is a single by the way. So I haven't plied this with anything else. I literally did it and was like, yeah, <laughs> it wasn't really enough on its own to then ply with itself if that makes sense so I couldn't make like a center pull ball um so I just thought oh, I'll keep it as a single and what I'm planning to do with these is I mean firstly they're just quite cute um but I am planning on maybe using these in weaving um because obviously when you start spinning like with anything it's gonna take me a while to get to something I'm probably happy with knitting but I thought maybe weaving would be nice. Um, so I do actually have a lap loom. It's not with me here, it's at my family home. Um, but yeah, I thought maybe I could do some weaving and make some wall hangings. I don't know if you've got any recommendations for what to do with uneven hands. <laughs> I thought absolute worst and I can't even use it for loom weaving. I can put it in my aunt's compost or like in the soil because actually you can I've used soil in my garden before which has wool in it um or like parts of sheep fleece in it so yeah um obviously though this is a hundred percent wool product so it's fine to put in the soil um and it's yeah non seed wash it hasn't been chemically treated so yeah um that's yeah my new thing so I definitely want to try more of it this weekend um and just take it slowly and yeah it was I still find I just find it all a bit intimidating to be honest I, wa I was thinking of maybe I know you can get lessons locally so I might go to one of those um because I'm one of these people that learns a lot better um learning from somebody else so we'll see um but yeah I'm just quite happy with it I just think it looks quite cute um and yeah any recommendations please let me know um yeah I'd love to hear so let's talk a little bit about reading and then I'm going to talk about my make nine and future plans and yeah and then we'll be done and I was hoping to keep this podcast quite short but it looks like uh we're still going strong and it's going gonna be quite long so yeah if you're still here, thanks for keeping up. So last time I mentioned that I was re Ooh, that's my sock blocker. Um, I was reading Dear Mrs. Bird by AJ Pierce and I finished it 
it's wonderful it's about a woman who wants to become a war correspondent um like a journalist and it's set during world war ii in london and she ends up writing for a women's magazine um and doing helping the agony aunt um at the magazine and her kind of misadventures there and her it's about her friends and there's a very slight love story but it's really not the main focus it's mostly about like her relationships with her friends and her family um her best friend in particular and it's just a lovely book it's really yeah a good i love reading interwar fiction so like from the 30s that's like one of my favorite periods but i also really like reading fiction set in and from world war ii and world war one just find it really interesting um and yeah i always really enjoyed when my grandma um was is my mum's family from london and my grandma was evacuated from london they at the time like south london essex um romford so kind of london uh on the edge um, but they were evacuated during the war and yeah i always heard stories about the war and were really interesting and my granddad was a uh, in the raf so yeah as an engineer so this is really interesting and i yeah just quite enjoy reading about it um obviously it was horrendous so you know enjoy is a slightly tenuous word but i just find it an interesting period it's what i'm trying to say um so yeah i really enjoyed this and i'd really recommend it if you like historical fiction and books about friendship and just really like charming books that are quite funny and yeah i found it really engaging as well i finished it really quickly this does have a sequel um i think it's actually there might even be more books in the pipeline so i will definitely be reading the sequel soon um once i can get my hands on it maybe once it's come out in paperback um i find those a bit more portable and yeah i'm really looking forward to finishing it uh finishing reading the next one um i know aid from bubbles and berries is currently reading it and enjoying it so that's yeah gives me good hope um so then i started reading a house in the country by jocelyn playfair this is a persephone book it's book number 31 from them so it's quite an early one their books are numbered in like the date of publication um and this was actually written in 1941 so it's set during world war ii and it was written in the time and it's about a woman who lets out her house to different people she lives in the countryside as you could tell from uh, the title and she lets out her house to all these various people um i think that was quite common during the war was letting out big houses like letting out the rooms in them um for people who were maybe in the army or in the yeah armed services or who were coming out didn't want to be in london anymore or cities obviously they were getting bombed um so yeah she rents out her house and she is called cressida and you find out more about uh why she's there in the house um and her kind of past i suppose and it's kind of you slowly revealed over time like her kind of past um and yeah i'm really enjoying it i'm not loving it as much as i've loved some of other persephone books recently um but i think there is some really beautiful writing and um i've just really enjoyed yeah very beautiful writing in parts there's just a really beautiful uh chap a paragraph a few chapters ago about love um that was beautiful and i thought was so true and yeah i thought the right the think the writing is lovely um and the characters are very very well drawn um but yeah it's quite sad i suppose in places um but yeah really like beautiful and i've got about 40 pages left so hopefully i can finish this this weekend and start something else um but yeah i'm still enjoying it so i will let you know how i go on in my next episode <laughs> so lastly I wanted to briefly talk about my Make Mine plans for 2022. I was going to talk about this in the last episode, but it just got so long that I didn't want to bore you all and like make a two hour podcast. 
so I thought I'd talk about it briefly here. Um, I know not everyone makes make nines or like goals for themselves. I haven't really made many other New Year's resolutions. I've made a few uh, like personal ones, but nothing really that big. Um, yeah, nothing like I haven't really set like work targets or anything for myself. Um, yeah, because trying to focus on um you know getting through 2022 like with the pandemic and yeah just you know I yeah what am I trying to say um so yeah I did make a make nine in 2021 and I really enjoy it for me that structure works really well I like having goals um I've always set reading goals on goodreads um so which I think last year was the first year I didn't achieve it but it was my first year of full-time work um um since I was a student which isn't really full-time well it wasn't with me because I did an English degree <laughs> um so yeah it that was the first year that I hadn't hit it um and I guess just also life had opened up a bit more after um we weren't really in any lockdowns for most of 2021 um, no, we went my way. So yeah, I didn't have as much time to read. So um, yeah, I really like the make nine format. Last year I did a knitting and sewing one and I'm doing the same again this year just because I don't, I just kind of like to split, split it up to be honest. Um, and what I find with the knitting and is that it, I focus on like big goals of like things I really want to knit that are maybe like a jumper or shawls um, and then maybe some smaller projects as well that I like really want to make and then the sewing ones it really forces me to evaluate what I need in my wardrobe and yeah I will put a picture I like my little grid picture up here but I'll then show the individual photos when I talk about them so We'll start with the knitting and the first thing i'm actually gonna use my notes um the first thing is the soiree jumper by emily foden i've spoken about this before um i've had the yarn for this for ages nearly a year since my birthday my birthday is in march and yeah last march i asked for the yarn for this sweater and that was kind of what when my parents were like, what do you want for your birthday? I was like, this please. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have, and I still haven't knit it. And I think they're probably like, if I say, if I asked for yarn again for this birthday, I think they'd be like, well, you haven't used last year. So do you need it? <laughs> so <laughs> I probably need to use it. And also I really want this in my wardrobe. Um, it's a beautiful, quite simple boxy sweater, but with a really lovely cable details. And it's from her book knits about winter which we all know i love and um, the yarn i've got i've actually got it here to show you because i don't think i've shown it on the podcast um it's the john arben yarnadelic um which is a sport weight slash heavy four ply and it is in the shade uh pink moon and the yeah it's kind of the makeup of it is that it is a hundred percent falklands corriedale and there's 333 metres per 100 grams. So yeah, like a heavy four ply slash um, sport weight. <laughs> and I am holding it together with, so the yarn, the pattern suggestions are either a DK or a four ply held with a lace mohair. And I really wanted to have that like mohair uh, kind of feel of a halo of it. Um, so I'm holding it double with the Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair in the colour Rose Clay, which is 70% mohair, 30% silk, uh, traceable to farm reach standard, which is what I really love about the Knitting for Olive Silk Mohair. And it also just feels beautiful. Um, and I, as I mentioned earlier, I love this brownie pink colour. So I actually, I swatched for it maybe last summer um and then i started knitting my mum's talvinin and started knitting another cardigan which i'm still knitting but it's not an active whip um 
so I wanted to gauge swatch again because I think my gauge would probably have changed and it has so this is my gauge swatch so this is how the fabric will turn out I'm aware this is too small to be a gauge swatch but I'm lazy um and yeah oh it's just I really love the fabric it's not too see-through but it's like not heavy um and I love like the interplay of the mohair with the Corydale and what I love about this yarn um I really like John Arban yarns in general I knit with their Devonia which is lovely and their Exmoor sock they're both like beautiful bases I haven't knit with this one before but the Yarnadelic range is um inspired all the shades are inspired by John of John Arban's uh, record collection so all of the yarns are named after songs so the song you can actually listen to the playlist on Spotify. I'll link it below. Um, it's a real like variety of different music. Um, and the song that this shade is inspired by is Pink Moon, which is by Nick Drake. Um, he is a like folk, acoustic-y songwriter uh, recording, I think in the 60s and 70s. Um, and I love his music. Um, I don't, I actually haven't listened to loads of it, but he has his one really famous album, which has Pink Moon on it, is I really love. Um, and yeah, so I just thought it was kind of serendipitous that I love this colour and it was named after one of my favourite songs. Um, and yeah, the, all of the yarns are beautiful, but I just love this like pink brown colour. I just think it's lovely. And yeah, it's, yeah, on, I would say it's a bit more on the more pricey side. Um, so yeah, hence why it was a gift, um, because it's a, was, especially at the time I hadn't been knitting, like, seriously for that long, and I wasn't, so yeah, it was a really lovely gift for my parents, so I'm very grateful, and yeah, I'm just excited to knit up the soiree in this combination, and yeah, so I've obviously got, like, um, the, I don't just have these, I've got, like, four quantities of them. Um, so yeah, I'm probably going to cast that on really soon because I'm just, yeah, desperate to get to it. So that's, yeah, the first project on my Make 9. The second is another project I've spoken about before and it's the Radiant Star Cow by Ella Gordon, which is a beautiful colour work, Fair Isle Cowl. Um, it's, yeah, got this beautiful uh, star um kind of motif on it and like the colors in the original are beautiful but i've chosen some different colors which i spoke about in my last episode where i kind of showed you my swatch for it um very much inspired by taylor owen's version and yeah that is something i'd really love to knit i am probably gonna cast it on again quite soon probably when i finish the cow for my aunt um just because it uses the same needle size and the same cord and yeah I want to just get that gift knit off the needles first but yeah um I've just I, I'm really in a massive fair hour phase at the moment I just, like re I'm really craving like Shetland wool fair isle colour work um yeah knitting so I'm really looking forward to casting that on the next project is that I'd love to make is the Willa Cardigan by Sari Nordland. And one of the kind of things that I realised last year was that I wear a lot of cardigans. Um, mainly one cardigan that is the shop bought one I mentioned earlier that I bought a few years ago second hand on eBay. And it's like an alpaca wool mix, um, probably with some polyamide in it. And I wear it all the time, like most days. Um, I just really like how you can throw a cardigan on and be warm um, and yeah I say I wear that cardigan more than some of my jumpers to be honest um, kind of depends what I'm wearing um, but I'd really like to knit some cardigans this year because yeah I think they're so practical for like how I dress and um, yeah like layering and yeah I just really like to knit one and the Willa cardigan is lovely it's like a really beautiful cable design it's knit in a worsted weight yarn I think I'll probably knit it out of Gilead by Dererum Natura because it's not too expensive and it's a European yarn it's uh I think it's a mixture of French and Portuguese 
um, merino um, from non-mulesing non uh, practices and yeah it's pretty um, ethical so yeah that is and there's like non super wash no nylon um, so yeah I will hopefully be getting some of that later in the year when I've knit um, maybe once I'm like a good way through my soiree and yeah have knit some more of my sweater quantities of yarn the next thing is something I've wanted to knit for ages and it is the Vertices Unite Shawl by Stephen West. It's, you've probably seen it, um, it's a beautiful huge shawl and you, it's basically got all these different sections to it um, that are kind of like organic shapes, uh, like parallelograms I think and like yeah it's a really beautiful design, it's really yeah really as with most Stephen West you know it's very original um I've never knit a Stephen West pattern before but I really like his designs I think as with a lot of people that I follow um I'm sometimes a bit intimidated by them because they are beautiful don't get me wrong I think they look gorgeous and they're incredibly intricate works of art but the colours he chooses um yeah of course they're beautiful but I don't see them as something I could wear because they're very bright and he loses like a lot of neons and just like a lot of colours that I don't wear and wouldn't wear um so sometimes I find it hard to kind of visualise myself wearing his patterns um which is why I haven't knit any of them um but the Vertices Unite is quite simple and I think I'm gonna knit it in hopefully some leftovers um and I want to kind of go for like a brownie pink green colourway. I've kind of already chosen some stuff from my stash and I'm gonna see what I have left. I'd quite like to include some colours like this and also the I've got a cone of woolly knit cinnamon that I think this looks really lovely with. Um, and then maybe I've got some solia from Hillsvag and I've got some leftover Bichet Bouche. Um, so yeah it'll be a whole combination of things i want to keep it hopefully non super wash um just because i want it to be super warm um and snuggly um so yeah i will see because obviously this is a bit more drapey than like a shetland um because it's corydale so so we'll see um but yeah, I'll definitely like do some swatching and stuff and see what works together. Um, but yeah, I am so excited to knit that. It's going to be a big undertaking um, for me, at least. Um, I don't knit a lot of shawls, to be honest. I really like knitting them. Um, but yeah, I, I'm quite fussy about the shape of shawls. Um, I don't really like the traditional triangle shawls on, I th obviously I think they look lovely, but they're just not something I wear. Um, I'm never quite sure how to style them. So like a, whereas like a crescent shawl, I just like wrap it around and kind of wear it like that. So yeah, I think a Vertices Unite will be a good introduction to Stephen West. And then the last knitting thing on my list is the Curio Socks by Andrea Maori. And these are a really lovely pair of toe-up socks using Spin Cycle, um, or at least Andrea Maori use, uses Spin Cycle, but she also says you can use your own hand spun. Um, I don't think I'll be spinning anything that in the near future that I would use for socks, to be honest. I, don't, I think that's going to take me a bit of time, but I would love to use Spin Cycle it's pretty pricey um for us in the uk it's around i think it's around 26 to 28 pound per skein um for 50 grams i could be wrong um but yeah it's for me for me anyway that's quite a lot of money um so it's more of a indulgence for me and yeah but i would really like to try it and I think the Curio socks would be great because you only need one skein and yeah it would just be great to try it for the first time um so yeah maybe later on in the year maybe like around March or April it'd be great to knit a pair I have already got the 
um I picked up some Mondeme last time I was in Bath and went to a yarn story I was contemplating picking up some spin cycle at the same time but I was restrained and I didn't do it um so yeah I will probably pick up some spin the spin cycle later this year but I've got the Mondeme already um and yeah I'm really excited like I'm I think spin cycle is gonna be so fun to work with like I can I'm not saying it's not worth the price it's just for me it's like something I haven't quite been able to commit to yet um because I'm a bit like oh that much money on one skein <laughs> um but I'm yeah really excited to get to them so yeah there's four sewing patterns that I'd like to make this year and the first one is the estuary skirt by Sew Liberated um I've made this pattern before for my mum and she yeah I made her a skirt last summer on her request so she paid for the fabric and I just sewed it up for her um she can sew but she, I she don't think she, she's sewing garments for quite a while for a few years um mum correct me <laughs> if I'm wrong um so yeah I've always offered like if she wants anything made I'll make it for her um if she wants it and like well she'll pay for the materials and that's like a trade <laughs> um because I I really like sewing for her and yeah so she asked for this skirt um and I used some fabric from Merchant and Mills that she chose and yeah it's really nice it's a lovely pattern I've used I've actually made a so liberated hinterland dress again for my mum she likes her patterns um and I do too actually um they're I think they're really well laid out they're inclusive in size yeah I think they go up to a US size 32 or 34 um and yeah I love the estuary skirt so last year actually on my make nine was the fjord skirt by closet core which is a kind of similar style except it's not as gathered it's just more straight so it's still like a button down skirt um but it's a bit more a-line and it doesn't have all those gathers in it it's not quite as full um but I think actually the estuary skirt would suit me better and kind of my style better so I'm yeah didn't get around to the fjord skirt last year but I definitely want to make a skirt for myself this year because I have got a lot of dresses and I've got quite a few jeans but I really lack um like other trousers that aren't jeans skirts and or like longer skirts that I can wear in the winter I've got like a nice uh handmade linen skirt that I wear in the summer that's like shorter but in the winter I don't really have anything and like blouses I have a few I actually have quite a lot but some of them are quite smart like they're more for work um so it'd be nice to have some like more casual tops that aren't t-shirts so yeah that is kind of like my sewing goal I suppose this year is to make more like separate so that kind of fits into that and following on from that I would really like to make the Eve trousers by Merchant and Mills and oh I have had <laughs> yeah I haven't I've made myself one pair of trousers yeah no one pair of trousers before I made the Pomona pants by Anna Allen and I really like them I made them in a linen um they're really great for the summer I like I wear them in work they're good because like they're not jeans but I they look smart enough to wear to work even though they're linen um although I do work in quite a casual office like I can wear jeans but if I want to be a bit smarter I can wear these trousers it's like a shirt or a blouse or a jumper in like the colder months um and I do really like them but I made the wide leg style and I'd really like some tapered trousers that aren't jeans and originally I was thinking I would make the worker trousers by the modern sewer um they look perfect they look to be exactly what I'm after in terms of style but I haven't seen the sizing range is pretty limited and I haven't seen anyone my size make them um on Instagram at least so they look amazing on other people but I just haven't seen anyone of my size make them and to be honest that puts me off a bit um I'd really like to see them on someone with a similar body shape to me because then I can kind of gauge how I'm going to feel about them and like whether the fit is good on them and how much you know I just don't want to buy a pattern that I'm going to have to alter loads to be honest um I think with trousers it's a bit inevitable um 
but yeah the pomona pattern actually i made i must be quite similar to the block that anna allen uses because that was fine um but yeah i her sizing isn't gr massively inclusive so i'd rather i do still buy her patterns i'm nowhere near perfect but i'd rather buy something that's a bit more inclusive um so yeah the eve trousers is what i kind of decided on they're not exactly what i want um they i'd really like something with like a button like a button and fly um on like the center like a kind of pair of jeans um whereas the eve trousers you have like a side zip and a button on the side um but yeah so they're not exactly what i want but i think i've seen other like more people like here on my shape make them and they look yeah like kind of how i want so i think i'll make those i'm also looking at the not i would say noise <laughs> but i think it's noise uh jeans by moona and broad who are a uh plus size um sewing pattern company that i love and i'm fit into their one of their smaller sizes which is yeah great because i love their patterns <laughs> and um so yeah i maybe might make those out of like a canvas i want something super hard wearing that i can i'm pretty <laughs> hard on my clothes um so yeah something like really hard wearing i'd love to make a pair out of cord it actually got to the point where i would buy some because i really hate trouser fitting it's just not something i enjoy um and i went to uh one of the sustainable brands that i really like called finisterre uh, they're uk based and they didn't do my size um in like I, they wouldn't according to their size chart i wouldn't fit in their larger size so yeah <laughs> um i something i'm massively passionate about is fashion in general being inclusive but specifically sustainable and ethical fashion is it's just so much of it isn't it's an industry that i've worked in and it's not inclusive and yeah for numerous different reasons but it's frustrating but anyway i'm planning to email them about it um which is all i can do um because i would quite happily buy a pair from them um but yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't fit in them so and that's happened to me a few times actually with other sustainable companies um which is a real shame because yeah there's just some things that i don't want to say but yeah i yeah anyway moving on <laughs> i would like to make myself a pair of cord trousers and then the last two things is one i've spoken about before and it is a quilted jacket in the fabric that i bought from the charity shop last at the very end of last year i'm thinking probably the hovia jacket by megan nielsen um would be a good pattern but then i've also seen that by hand london might be releasing one um and there's a pauline alice pattern that i really like as well so yeah i've kind of got a few options um but i would love to make a quilted jacket and then finally i would really love to sew the jenna dress by by hand london which is an empire waist dress um it's kind of got a kind of a square neck with that's slightly scooped and i yeah really love to make this in the version with like the lower neck not the one with the piece of pan collar and i really wanted to make this last summer and just didn't get around to it um but i think it would be yeah a really nice dress to make and i think it'd be great for the summer um so yeah i put it on my make nine so that i can finally get to it so yeah let me know if you're making a make nine is that something that you're kind of planning on doing have you set yourself any sewing or knitting or making goals um yeah aside from the spinning and like making myself some separates uh my goal really is just to enjoy knitting and sewing and maybe try some patchwork and some quilting at some point um that is something i kind of started looking at last year um and yeah the spinning is something i'd really like to try and also some natural dyeing um which i haven't done before but that's something i'd really like to try and so yeah just kind of carrying on exploring all the different fiber crafts and yeah 
getting better at tailoring I think as well with this trouser fitting that I'm journey that I'm going to be going on um yeah thank you so much for watching and um, please let me know what you're knitting on at the moment um any spinning advice would be so greatly appreciated um and yeah thank you for listening to my slight rant about inclusivity uh sizing inclusivity I'm sure there are things I haven't got exactly right and as I said before I'm not perfect um but yeah I think it's really important uh to talk about um and all other forms of inclusivity and diversity obviously um are important to me and yeah um but yeah I think it's open to good to talk about these things and be open about it um so yeah thank you so much for watching and yeah I'll hopefully see you all again soon bye <laughs>